Hi there, we're so delighted to introduce to you our free church app. Uh, this app is loaded with features and resources that will greatly enrich your life. So head out to the app or Google Play stores, search for All People's Church Bangalore and download the app right now. It's going to greatly enrich your journey with God. Hey, I'm Naveen from Bangalore, a regular 90s kid. Every Christmas, I knew exactly what I wanted. Once, it was a Hot Wheels mini truck. But Pa said Santa can't afford it. I had to settle for a Maruti Omni. In high school, I knew my calling. Video games. But mom and dad they were fighting a lot i couldn't really ask them that was the last christmas they spent together later at the boarding christmas was quite lonely ma was busy handling so much paperwork in college i explored life i met my first love bella nasha but like any tragic story we parted ways on a christmas day now when i look back i realize while holiday seasons are a good reason to celebrate there's something incomplete undone maybe that perfect gift that i hoped for as a little kid Greetings and uh, wishing you a wonderful Christmas season and um, a Christ-centered time of celebration and rejoicing as you get together with uh, family, friends, and people from church and uh, whoever else that you get together with as you celebrate uh, the season where we remember uh, the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. All of us uh, enjoy receiving presents, and of course we. I also enjoy giving presents, gifts to uh, each other, and which especially happens around this time of the year, uh, as we celebrate Christmas as well as uh, get to close off a year and get ready for a brand new year uh, that's out on the horizon. And um, usually, when you know when you uh, are going about selecting gifts, uh, presents that you want to give uh, to family f- family members or close friends. Uh, there is a lot of thought that normally goes into it because uh, a, a well thought out gift usually uh, addresses a specific need uh, in the life of that person. You know, you want to buy something not for the sake of buying something, uh, but you want to give them a present that would uh, that would take care of a need that you recognize that that they might have. Now, of course, if you have friends who who've got it all, who've got everything, it makes it that much more difficult to try to find a present. Or a gift uh, that they would feel that they really needed to have, but that's generally the thought process that goes in as we try to identify what gifts or presents to give to someone, something that will make them happy, something that will, uh, you know, uh, feel valued by addressing a need that's in their lives. And of course, we get a lot of um, a joy uh, when we see people, uh, you know, receiving our presents or our gifts and. Uh, uh, enjoying it, treasuring it, and uh, feeling happy that somebody uh, gave them a well thought out gift. Now, Christmas is really the celebration of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ that took place two thousand years ago. Yes, history. Uh, historically, Jesus Christ was born about two thousand years ago, and around the time of his birth, both at the time of his birth, when the angels came to announce that. Uh, Jesus, the baby Jesus, was born, uh, and subsequently, as people, his followers understood uh, the significance of his birth, they realized that Jesus coming into this world was God's greatest present, if you will, or God's greatest gift to man. 
Uh, look at some scriptures here in Luke, the second chapter, verses 10 and 11. As the angels announced the birth of Jesus to the shepherds, here's what, they, uh, here's what the angels said. It says, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. So he's announcing something great, a good news that is meant not just for the Jewish people, but really it's an announcement that is meant for people everywhere. The angel said for all people, uh, good news that will bring great joy, great celebration. This is God's greatest gift to man, something that people are going to, are going to, be fe are going to feel really happy about. And uh, the Apostle John, when he writes in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 14, he tells us that, the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. So God the Father sending His Son into the world for a purpose, to be the Savior, uh, to be a great gift to all of humanity, to people across all nations, of all cultures, of all languages, all over the world. God's singular, God's perfect, God's gift or God's present to all of humanity. And God did this because of His great love. He loved people, and so He said, I'm going to give them the best that I can give. And that's why the Bible tells us in John 3 and verses 16 and 17, which is uh, maybe familiar to many of us, that God loved the world so much that He gave His only begotten Son so that anyone who believes in Him will not die but have everlasting life. So people recognize around the time of His birth that Jesus coming into the world was God's greatest endowment, God's greatest present to humanity, to people all over the world. Now here we are 2,000 years later, 2,000 years post the birth of Jesus Christ. Of course, it's a time of celebration, but the question is, does the present which God gave man 2,000 years ago bear any relevance to us today, 2,000 years later? Is there any significance, uh, any meaning, any value to Christ's birth, which took place 2,000 years ago for you and me living today? Is that present given still relevant to us today? And I want to present to us, I want to share with us two thoughts that would affirm and would, would cause us to think in the affirmative. First of all, think about this, that times have changed, of course, uh, many centuries have come and gone. We're almost two millennia, of millennia away from the birth of Christ. But there's one thing that has not changed, and that, that is people have not changed. Yes, the way we live life and the way we go about life uh, has changed, but at our very core, who we are as human beings has not changed. Way back in the book of Genesis, this was several thousand years prior to the birth of Christ. The book of Genesis tells us in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5 that the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So think about this. Thousands years of years ago prior to the birth of Christ, and here we are 2,000 years after the birth of Christ. And this verse describing man at his very core still holds true. People have not changed. That in essence, we deal with wickedness. That man is wicked. That the intent and the thoughts of people's hearts are evil continually. Yes, there are glimpses of goodness here and there. There are glimpses of things that happen in a very positive sense here and there. But when you look around the world, look at the world around us, in the immediate surroundings, and even in the distant places, and you hear about things taking place, what do we see? We see man's wickedness on display. Some of the things that we hear people do and some of the things that are taking place are so evil. They express the fact that man, the man's thoughts are continually evil. People have not changed. Another important thing for us to consider is that people's needs has not changed. Our needs 
have not changed over time. Yes, in, in terms of our material comforts and the way we take care of our physical needs, how we address those needs, those have changed. We have greater comforts, we have greater modes of transportation, greater ways of communication, and all of those developments have uh, you know, greatly enhanced our standard of living, the way we live, things we enjoy, the way we travel and communicate and so on. Yes, how we address those needs uh, our physical needs, our emotional needs have uh, evolved over time. But at our very core, our needs, our spiritual and emotional needs have not changed. For instance, you know, our need for meaning and purpose. Thousands of years ago, as you look through history, you find out that people were searching for meaning and, and purpose in life. And so you have different philosophers who have come and gone at various times in the scene, uh, trying to address this need, trying to give thought to this, and, and expressing ideas and concepts, and trying to point to direction and uh, give uh, ways, and, and trying to frame a point of reference so that people can derive some meaning and purpose uh, in their existence. So man's need for meaning and purpose, that has not changed. You know, no matter how much we do, no matter what we do, underlying everything, we come back to this question, why am I here? Or what, what am I here for? Uh, what am I living for? Uh, is there meaning to all of this? Is there significance in things that happen in my life? And secondly, man's need for relationship. We are relational beings and we crave for love. We crave to be loved. We crave to pour out love to somebody or to some people, towards something. We long for deep and meaningful relationships that would address our emotional needs and deeper needs of our heart. So man's needs at the very core has not changed over time. So God's gift to man, God's present to man, God's perfect present to man, Jesus Christ, He came to address these needs and even more. He looked past our needs uh, for uh, meaning and significance. Of course, he addresses those needs. He looks even beyond the need for our relationships and he goes to the very core of our being where he addresses the need for dealing with the wickedness and the continual evil that grips our hearts and minds, which ruins our lives. It ruins relationships that we enter into. It ruins things that could bring a lot of meaning and value to us. The, at the very core of our being, this wickedness and the evil that grips man, the Lord Jesus came as God's greatest gift, as God's perfect gift, as God's present perfect, the present that is perfect, absolutely perfect. He came to address our greatest need. How did he do that? When the Lord Jesus Christ came into this world, He taught man about the kingdom of God, about the ways of God. He demonstrated God's goodness. He revealed who He is. Uh, and the greatest thing Jesus Christ did was to go to the cross. On the cross, He dealt with our wickedness and He bore, with, He carried the sins that we have committed because the wrong that we have done, our sins, not only ruin our lives, but they ruin our relationship with God Himself. God, who is our Creator, He is the one who can provide meaning and purpose and direction for each one of us. God, who is our Creator, He is the one who can satisfy that deepest longing for meaningful relationship. God is the one who can do that. But our sins, the wrong we have done, blocks us hinders us, cuts us off from God who is holy and perfect. So what did Jesus do? He took upon Himself on the cross the penalty for our sins. He bore our sins on the cross. He paid for them so that this barrier of sin could be taken out of the way and that we could come into this beautiful relationship with God, with our Creator, that He could make us sons and daughters of God Almighty, bring us into that kind of relationship with God. 
And once we enter into that kind of relationship with God as sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, we are now able to understand, we are now able to receive meaning and purpose for our lives as God speaks into our lives. And we are now able to find relationships with people, relationships uh, around us that, that really meet our emotional needs, starting, first of all, with our own relationship with God. That's the greatest thing Jesus Christ came to give. He came to bring us back to God himself. He came to bring us into that wonderful relationship with God as sons and daughters. And he made it possible by taking this barrier of sin out of the way. And here's what the Bible, here's what the Bible says, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same Jesus whom we read about in the Gospels, in the Bible. He is the same today. He, he, he died for us on the cross. He was buried. He rose up again. He showed himself alive to his disciples and he ascended into heaven. And he's alive today. And he is the same. Listen to this. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And as the life-giving bread, he is still the one who satisfies the hunger of every heart. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And as the light of the world, he is still the one who enlightens each of us and gives light for our lives. Jesus said, I am the door. And as the door, he is still the only point of entry into the kingdom and into eternal life. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. And as the good shepherd, he still is the one who leads, guides, and nurtures each one of us who dares entrust our lives to him as our shepherd. Jesus said, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. And today he still remains the living water who satisfies and quenches the thirst of every longing heart. Jesus said, my peace I give to you. And as the Prince of Peace, he still is the one who gives us perfect peace. Peace in the midst of any turmoil. Peace which the world can't give us and which the world cannot take away. Jesus said, come to me and I, all who, who are tired and weary and I will give you rest. And as the one who gives rest to the weary, he still provides that for you and me today. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he still is the one who shows meaning, purpose, direction, truth, and life for each one of us. Jesus said, I am he who lives, was dead, and I'm alive forevermore. And he still is the only one who conquered sin, death, hell, and the grave. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And he is the only one who promises to raise those who believe in him up into eternal life because he conquered death. Jesus said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And he still remains the beginning and the end of all things. Everything revolves around him. Jesus said, I am, before Abraham was, I am. And as the eternal one, there is no one before or after him who can save us, who can touch our lives and bring meaning and purpose to us. Jesus is present, perfect. God's perfect present to us today. And the Bible invites you and me to receive God's perfect present. The Bible invites you and me to embrace the gift that God has provided freely for us. When somebody gives you a gift, you have the opportunity to receive it. And will you receive God's perfect present given to you this Christmas season? If you've never done that before, would you say, Jesus, I receive you into my life. I believe in you for who you are. And I accept you as the one who brings me into this relationship with God as the one who removes the sin and the wickedness that is in my life, as the one who meets my need for meaning, purpose, and significance, as the one who meets my need for deep, meaningful relationship, Lord Jesus, I receive you. Here's what the Bible promises. The Bible says that to everyone who believes in him, to them, Jesus gives the power to become the children of God. Jesus 
present perfect. God's perfect gift to you and me. Will you receive him today? If you've never done that before in your life, I want to lead you in a simple prayer for you to reach out your hands and receive Jesus Christ, God's perfect present given to you this Christmas season so that you can enter into a relationship with God, so that you can find meaning and purpose coming into your life from the one who created you, so that you can find your deepest relational needs, your need for love met through Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. If you've never done this before, I invite you to pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I receive you into my life. I recognize that you are God's perfect gift given to me. You came to bring me into a relationship with God. You came to meet every need in my life. I ask you to forgive my sins. Make me a child of God. And help me to live for you the rest of my life. Show me your purpose. Give me your meaning. And lead me, Lord, into your truth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us on the program today. And until next time, remember, live life to Jesus' way. How do you know the Holy Spirit is there? He says, when you all come together, each of you, you're coming with something. You've come with a song, with a psalm, with a tongue, with an interpretation, with a revelation, with a teaching. They're coming with those gifts ready to pour out to one another. When you come to church, you're saying, God, use me today to speak a word to somebody who needs it. Use me today to maybe share something I've learned with somebody. They come like that. It's been our privilege to be able to bring God's Word to you through these telecasts on television. Uh, in addition to the uh, television programming, All People's Church uh, reaches out across our land through free publications where thousands of books are given out, especially to pastors and people in remote areas and towns where they do not have access uh, to Christian bookstores. Uh, we also hold uh, Christian leaders' conferences and youth conferences uh, for people who do not uh, have access to these uh, teachings. Uh, we also conduct short-term Bible colleges in different parts of the country, training and equipping uh, people for uh, ministry and work of God's kingdom. For all of these, of course, we need money, and uh, therefore we would like to just open up this invitation to you. If you would like to partner with us, either in our television programs, our publications, our conferences, our training and equipping of pastors and leaders and also in church planting in areas across this land, feel free to do as the Lord leads and to contribute financially towards the work that all people's church is doing across India.